All right. Well, uh, I don't think Mr. Robot's firing on all cylinders quite yet. He's getting warmed up because uh, my name is actually John Wayne, and I'm reading a story called The Seat Thief by Van Wilde. See, it's a switcheroo. That's all right. I'm sure they've got him back there. They're going to blow some air into his head and get all those coils undusted, and, and uh, he's going to be right as rain. Yes, big WD-40 fan out here. I appreciate that. Seat Thief. Tuesday night. Grown-up story time. A gathering of individuals who probably couldn't count the podcasts they listened to on both hands. Individuals who sit in their car even though they've arrived at their destination because David Sedaris is on NPR for seven more minutes. <laughs> individuals who can be described as Quentin Tarantino's target audience. But Grown Up Storytime is home to another demographic, one more sinister and cunning, a demographic that walks the left-hand path and does not compromise, a demographic that doesn't look away when you catch it staring at you, me. Who am I? I am the seat thief. The seating arrangement at Gust can only be described as anarchy. You arrive early to get your seats. You hold on to them for dear life as the room fills to discomfort. Pity those that come alone or don't have a partner to save their seat for them when they want a beer. These individuals will not be drinking tonight. <laughs> but I don't care. I play the game. I live and thrive within this world of seating anarchy, and I get what I want. What do I want? I want your seat. <laughs> there are rules to the game. First rule, if possible, try to steal a chair occupied or vacated by a fat person. There are a few reasons for this. Now, hear me out. Nobody likes sitting next to a fat person, and you will be a welcome addition to the immediate seating area. <laughs> if you are a fat person yourself, this is also an advantage because it will be harder to tell you apart from the seat's former owner, allowing you to ironically blend in. And least of all, fat people need to spend more time on their feet anyway. Written by Van Wilde. Sec <clears throat> that goddamn robot. Second rule, avoid eye contact. If someone sees you taking a seat and the two of you lock eyes, they know your treachery. They know that you've broken the social contract of seating. They will despise you and they will write all about you in their blog. Third rule, move between stories. This is when the most people get up and the noise of meek NPR listeners purchasing their drink will cover the sounds of your movement. Alternatively, if it's, it is acceptable to move during a John Wayne story, as that's when the audience members with wholesome values walk out. And he's got my number. At this point, you may be wondering, what happens if you get caught? Well, worry not, my fellow hipsters. For one of our greatest strengths is also our greatest weakness. No one in this room is prepared in the slightest to deal with conflict. <clears throat> We're all still trying to figure out how we feel about our father. So how can we really be expected to handle manifest seat destiny. <laughs> if it were to come to blows, you would have to pay for a real doctor's appointment in addition to your therapy, and are you really prepared to make that kind of financial commitment? Fourth rule, no jujitsu. I know I said that uh, fighting wouldn't happen, but there's a small chance one of the audience decided to bring her well-adjusted athletic chivalric boyfriend even though her boyfriend's not really into this kind of thing and listens to 107.5 The Eagle, rest in peace, instead of NPR, they recently had a conversation about wanting to be a greater part of each other's lives. 
So she's going with him to see some MMA fights, and he's coming to watch neurotic writers express themselves through a third party. <laughs> anyway, he's glad he's here, because he's been suspicious of her friend Steven for a while now. They text too much, and that is not cool. Anyway, when Jared, the boyfriend, does catch you taking Felicity's seat, you're going to be able to knock him out before you make your escape. Fifth and final rule, if you do have to knock someone out, do it during a John Wayne story. The audience will think it's part of the show, and they will applaud you. Thank you. <laughs>